In this short video, I'm going to show you how I develop code for my Pine Time using WaspBoss and MicroPython. So what I have at the moment is a slightly old version of the Wasp firmware running on the device, and the first thing I want to show you is a full over-the-air update. So if I do a long press on the side of the watch, it will eventually reset and go into the bootloader. From the bootloader, I can search and I can connect to the bootloader, you'll notice the uh, little Bluetooth logo going blue in the corner. And from here I can download a zip file containing the new firmware. That will start and we'll start seeing the progress meter now. It's quite slow to transfer files over the air, it's less than a K a second. But you'll see it start to move. Um, and then you'll see a short break in the video while I edit out the, the middle section where I'm not speaking, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so it's time to wake up now. According to the timer on my camera, I've been away for about five minutes from you, um, and we've just seen we've reached the end of that process. You saw it reboot and load up a new version of the firmware. Um, what you should notice now, if you didn't before, is that there are no longer any hyphens in the date and the battery meter is more stable, because that's what I've changed in this particular update. Um, but what I then want to show you is what we do if we don't want to spend five minutes programming it. So if I go into here, this is just a link to my laptop so I can show you. Uh, I've then got tools here that I can use to do things like set the time. Um, so that at the moment the time is not preserved through a firmware update um, or any other reboot um, but we can trivially set it with a command on the laptop. Um, the other thing I want to show you was a driver I've been working on. So I've got um, a driver for the touch display that I'm currently working on debugging. Um, so it's a very simple bit of Python, just a, a class and everything else. Um, and so I want to uh, run that on the target uh, so I can go Tools, Wasp tool, and then tell it what file I would like to execute. So it will then transfer it to the target, just copy it in, and when it's finished copying it over, um, it will execute it. Now because it's just a driver, it's library code, it doesn't do very much, uh, so what I will also do is I've got this little test pi, which launches just enough for me to test the touch sensor. So again, I can use the same tool to run the test code, but on this occasion, because the test code only instantiates variables and really do very much, I'm going to add the console. So when it's finished uploading and it's run that program, it's going to go onto the console and I've got my REPL prompt here. So I can um, create an event to be populated. Um, Eventually this code is going to run an interrupt handler, so I don't want to allocate memory, so I'm going to pre-allocate the event, and then I can say TP, and you notice I tab completed um, to find the name of the uh, thing. Try to get the event, it's false, now that's because this particular touch sensor will only react when it's got an event pending, so if I touch the top corner and run again, oops, and run again, uh, it's now got the touch event. Um, and if I look at event, we can see it's five, which means a single press, uh, and it's happened at coordinates 17 and 76. So I was test testing kind of slightly in the top right there. If I go and touch the bottom corner and run the same thing again, we'll now see that we've now got our different coordinates because we've hit the bottom. I can also do things like gestures. So I'm be very careful on this one. If I swipe upwards, get the event. We've changed that five to two, which means swipe up. Now swipe down, oops, I'll move the watch a bit there. Swipe down. So it's recognising the gestures, that means roughly speaking my driver's doing very nicely. So I will leave that there. And the final thing I'll show you is Wasp tool upload, I think it's called. Um, so I can take my completed driver when I've finished it and I can transfer it to the device. Um, and that will copy it onto a file system contained in the flash on the device and that then allows me to use the driver in some new bits of code that I'm working on. Um, and you can do quite a lot just by uploading and modifying bits of Python, uh, testing it dynamically. Uh, and then when you're finished and you're happy with your code completely, you can take it off the file for system and transfer it into the MicroPython image itself. So the clock program that you see whenever we press the button. Um, 
is part of the Python code. It's all written in Python code, but that's written in Python code that has been what's called frozen and stored in the firmware image itself. So as soon as you start your watch, you'll always have that time available for you to see. So that's just a summary of how I develop Python code, um, and I hope you found it interesting.